everyone, welcome to season two of the uh, Glam Shed. As you can see, we have made amazing progress on the main house, but you might have been able to tell that we have snow on the ground, so that means it's pretty dangerous to be working on the roof and setting siding and roofing and all that kind of stuff. So um, we're going to be working on the shed and hopefully finishing it this time. Another thing about the shed is that we actually use it to experiment on new products, uh, new assemblies, new details, so that when we move on to the main house, we get it completely right. So, in this episode, we're going to be talking exterior insulation for the roof of the shed. So, let's get into it. Here we are installing the extensions for the cavity where the exterior insulation will be. We are using 2x6 pressure treated lumber. We have ripped this lumber to about four and a quarter inches so that any should any water get into the insulation it has enough room to dry. And But I would not recommend the use of pressure treated lumber at all because it's very twisty and it's very difficult to get it to look nice. And we're getting to the point where this fascia needs to be nice looking and aesthetic and all that stuff. For that reason, from now and into the future, we will be using pressure treated engineered uh, wood. Uh, because the material is so twisty, we are installing it with a six inch GRK uh, screws at six inch on center. So if you were to use uh, engineered wood, you would probably be able to increase the spacing to either 12 or 16 inches and save some money that way. I want to tell you a little, a little bit about this product. Its name is uh, a Seagirt because it forms like a little C, although it has like a little tab. But anyway, it is uh, particular to this case. But this is a very cool product because uh, this is made by Gladiator, some, a company somewhere in the East Coast. The coolest thing about it is that it's a fireproof or fire retardant. At least it won't ignite. And here in the mountains, I don't know if you know, we care significantly about fire. That's why we're also using rock wool. Another side benefit of it is that it's a fiberglass, so it doesn't conduct heat, conduct heat very well. So it gives us a very nice thermal envelope. Um, so let me tell you a little bit what's going on here on the roof first. You might see like a, we, we have like a, a piece, small pieces there, and then we go to a large one. Small piece, large, small piece, large. And that's mainly to save on material because it costs a lot of money to ship it all the way from the East Coast. So we are cutting them at 6 inches and then putting them every 16 inches. That's giving us like a 40% material utilization, which is extending our Seagirt significantly. So that's a 6 divided by 16. Um, but we are also in the roof and we're in the mountains, so it's very windy. So that's why we are also pull, putting the full, uh, I guess, stick of uh, Seagirt to give the roof proper strength. We might not necessarily do this for the walls. So here we are on the roof shed, we are installing our Rockwell Comfortboard 80 and we are so happy. So here's the funny thing, we were so eager to get the 4 inch insulation, but we had to order a full truck and it was a ton of money. So we said no, 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 we'll do it with 2 inch insulation and we'll just put 2 layers of it. And it turned out awesome. So when you do, when you install one layer, sometimes between the joints you end up with, with holes, so even though we fill them, when you put the second layer and you do it staggered, then it covers them completely and it works out great. And another thing, it's much easier to cut uh, two inch insulation than four inch insulation. So, you know, it turned out for the best. You 
just noticed that our layout is a little bit strange and that's in part because well this part is not finished but the other one is because um, we have them aligned with the rafters that are um, below and that is because we are in a very strong wind zone so we need to give this the, the most stability so this product right here is going to help us to to hold the insulation but also to give us a very sturdy surface for the seat panels to attach to. installation of the sheeting we actually finished this during the summertime but uh, one thing we should mention is that there is about a quarter inch gap between the sheeting and the rockwool insulation that's for rockwool's recommendations and the cigars actually help you with that so you have the insulation coming up about this way and then it's going to leave this gap and the idea is that if any water ever gets in it can dry so with that in place we then apply the zip sheeting we, we rolled it and then we went an extra step and we applied sascos through the roof on top of every single fastener just as an extra layer of protection. And with that, we are ready to install the skylight. So the skylight, we got it at Home Depot. It's a Velux skylight. We actually like it very much and they are pretty affordable. Also, our architect says that they are the best. So let's go and do it. And with the skylight in place, we are done with this episode, although we do have some uh, learnings in general. Uh, so let's begin with the skylight. Uh, first off, you need to read the instructions, which we didn't. Uh, we made the frame of the skylight exactly to the rough opening of the skylight. And yeah, it fits, but it turns out that it actually needs to be a little bit smaller, like a quarter inch on each side. And the reason for that is because you need to bring in the waterproofing, the flashing and whatnot. And more importantly, when, when it rains, the water needs to drip uh, in open space, let's say. It, it cannot be dripping against the wall of the frame. So that's one of the reasons we had to rework that. Unfortunately, we don't have that on tape, but it's not very exciting. We just had to do it again. Um, that said, let's go on to the general uh, learnings. First off, uh, the Seagirts, they are very strong. They're fiberglass. The only problem with the Seagirts is when you walk around on the roof, it feels a little bit bouncy. And uh, I'm not really fond of that because uh, if the roof starts deflecting, the tape could start spreading and uh, contracting and it could actually end up breaking over time. Um, so that's one important lesson. We'll keep it like this for the shed, but for the main house, we're probably going to be using a two by two bys um, so that we can uh, nail to it as if they were rafters and we won't get any ref uh, deflection. Uh, and with that, let's go somewhere else so that I can show you uh, one final detail to close out this episode. You might notice we have a zip sheeting around the perimeter of the sofacia. The reason for that is because we use the pressure treated lumber for the extensions of the insulation. And uh, it is super twisty, so it was very difficult to get it nice and plumb and look nice. So for that reason, we added these uh, uh, OSB panels and we are actually only nailing it to the uh, structure of the sofacia, not to the extensions. And by doing that, it's allowing us to have a very nice and clean look that's very straight 
uh, because at this point we're now getting onto the aesthetics of the uh, subfacia. Uh, we have also the added benefit that is waterproof. So the lessons for the main house is we will not be using any more two bys or pressure treated. We will always be using uh, engineered wood, particularly for anything that's aesthetic. Uh, but we did like very much the use of the uh, panels because it makes it look really nice and continuous. So that's the last uh, detail I wanted to show you. And with that, let's just finish up this episode. Thank you for watching and we'll see you in the next one.